Dirtry. Nicknamed Ismet Aldenim Khalil, Khwarizmiya by origin, and it was said that she was Armenian or Turkish. She was a slave girl who was bought by the good Sultan Najm al Din Ayyub, and she held a high position with him until he freed her and married her. She gave birth to her son Khalil, who died on the 2nd of Safar, 648 AH, May 1250 CE. She assumed the throne of Egypt for 80 days with the allegiance of the Mamluks and notables of the state, after the death of the righteous Sultan Ayyub, then abdicated the throne to her husband, Elmuaz Ibak al-Turkmeni, in the year 648 AH, 1250 AD. It played an important historical role during the Seventh Crusade against Egypt and during the Battle of Mansura. Its Origins Seventh Crusade 1249 Shajarat Alder was a slave girl of Turkish or Khwarizmian origin and was said to be Armenian. al Sali Ayyub bought her before he became sultan, and she accompanied him during his arrest in Karak in the year 1239 with his slave named Rakhn al-Din Baybars al-Salihi, not al-Zahir Baybars, who later became sultan in 1260 AD, and gave birth to a son named Khalil. He was called King Mansur. After al Salah was released from prison, she went with him to Egypt and they got married there. After he became the Sultan of Egypt in the year, 1240 AD, she remained on his behalf in ruling when he was outside Egypt. In April 1249 AD, al-Sali Ayyub was in the Levant fighting the Ayyubid kings who were competing with him for power, and news reached him that King Louis IX of France, who became a saint after his death, in Cyprus, on his way to Egypt at the head of a large crusade to invade it near Damietta on the eastern mainland of the main branch of the Nile, in order to prepare the defenses if the crusaders attacked. Indeed, in June 1249 AD, the knights and soldiers of the Seventh Crusade disembarked from the boats on the mainland of Damietta and set up a red tent for King Louis. The chariots that the good king had placed in Damietta withdrew to defend it, so the crusaders occupied it easily while it was empty of its inhabitants who left it when they saw the chariots fleeing. So the good king was saddened and executed a number of the chariot riders because of their cowardice and deviance from his orders. al Salah moved to a safe place in Mansura. On November 23, 1249 AD, al Malik al Salah died after ruling Egypt for ten years and at a very critical moment in its history. Shajarat Alder summoned the commander of the Egyptian army, Prince Fakhr al-Din Yusuf, and the head of the royal palace, Altawashi Jamal al-Din Mohsen, and told them that the good king had died and that Egypt was now in a difficult situation without a ruler, and that an external invasion was gathering in Damietta. The three agreed to hide the news so as not to weaken the morale of the soldiers and the people, and to encourage the crusaders. In secret, and without anyone knowing, Shadrat Alder transported the body of the good king in a boat on Cairo and placed it in the castle of al Rada Island. Although al Sali bin Ayyub did not recommend before his death someone who would hold power after him, Shadrat Alder sent the leader of the Bari Mamluks, Faris al Din al Jamder, to Fort Kaif to summon Turan Shah ibn al Sali Ayyub to rule Egypt in place of his deceased father. Before al Sali Ayyub died, he gave blank papers to Shajarat Alder so that you could use them if he died. Shajarat Alder and Prince Fakhr al-Din continued to issue royal orders on these papers. They said that the sultan was sick and could not meet anyone. And the food was brought into the room where he was supposed to sleep so that no one would suspect. And they issued a royal order to renew the covenant of the righteous sultan Ayyub and to install his son. Tehran Shah, as crown prince of the Egyptian Sultanate, and they allied the princes and soldiers. Mamluk victory over the Seventh Crusade. Louis IX of France is taken prisoner at Ferriscourt. Somehow, the news of as Sali Ayyub's death reached the crusaders in Damietta. At the same time, supplies arrived in Damietta with Alphonse de Poitiers, brother of King Louis. 
The crusaders were encouraged and decided to leave Damietta and head to Cairo. And forces of the crusader knights, led by Robert d'Artois, brother of King Louis, were able to pass the Ashmam Canal through a ford that they knew through one of the charioteers. They suddenly attacked the Egyptian camp in Jadala, about three kilometers from Mansura. Amir Fakhr al-Din Yusef was killed as he came out of the bathroom at the sound of clamor and shouting. Prince Rukn al-Din Baybars presented a plan to Shajar al-Dur, the de facto ruler of Egypt at that time, in which the crusader knights rushing towards Mansura would fall into a trap, and Shajar al-Dur agreed to the plan. Baybars met with Faris al-Din Iqtay, who became the commander-in-chief of the Egyptian armies. He organized the ranks of the retreating soldiers from Jedala inside Mansura, and asked them and the residents to remain completely still, so that the attacking crusaders would think that the city was empty, like what happened in Damietta. Indeed, the crusader knights fell into a trap and rushed into Mansura and headed towards the royal palace in order to occupy it. So the Bari Mamluks and the Jamadari Mamluks suddenly came out to them and attacked them from every side with swords and arrows, and the residents of Mansura and the volunteers came out wearing white copper helmets instead of the soldiers' helmets and beat them with all their might. The Mamluks besieged the attacking crusader forces and closed the streets and alleys, and the crusaders remained unable to escape leaving nothing but death on the ground or throwing themselves into the Nile River and drowning in it. Robert d'Artois, brother of Louis, hid inside a house, but the people found him and killed him, and the battle ended with the defeat of the Crusaders, an ignominious defeat, in the alleys of Mansura. He killed so many of them that only one or two of the Templars survived. This was the first appearance of the Marine Maliks inside Egypt as fighters defending Egypt. At that moment, the history of Egypt and the region around it was shaped by Shajarat al-Dur and men who entered the history of Egypt and the world, such as al-Zahir Baybars is al-Din Ibak, Kalawan al-Alfai, and others. Get rid of Tehran Shah. Get rid of Tehran Shah. Tehran Shah was assassinated in 1250. After the victory, the new sultan denied Shajarat al-Dur, and instead of preserving her beauty, he sent a threat to her and demanded her father's money, so she answered him that she had spent it on war affairs and managing state affairs. Tehran Shah was not satisfied with that, but his anger and anger extended to the princes of the Mamluks, the owners of the first credit for achieving the great victory and defeating the Seventh Crusade, and he began to think of getting rid of them, but they were earlier than him in movement and faster than him in preparation so they got rid of him by killing him at the hands of Iktay. Allegiance A dinar from the era of the Dur tree. The Mamluks found themselves in a new situation, today, they are the owners of the first word in the country and the reins of affairs are in their hands, and they are no longer a tool in the hands of those who use them to achieve an interest or achieve a goal, and they must choose a ruler for the country. Instead of choosing one of them to take over the affairs of the country, they chose Shajarat al-Dur to take over this high position. The Pledge of Allegiance was taken to the new sultan, and her name was engraved on the rail with the following phrase, al Mustasimiya al-Salahiya, Queen of the Muslims, Mother of Khalil, the Commander of the Faithful. It is worth noting that Shajarat al-Dur was not the first woman to rule in the Islamic world. Razia al-Din had previously assumed the Sultanate of Delhi, and her rule lasted four years, 634 to 638 AH, corresponding to, 1236 to 1240 CE. Arwa bint Ahmad al-Salehi, from the Banu Saleh dynasty, ruled Yemen from the date, 492 to 532 AH, corresponding to, 1098 to 1138 AD. The Liquidation of the Crusader Existence and as soon as Shajarat al-Dur sat on the throne, it took control of the affairs and controlled the administration of the country's affairs. The first work it cared about was liquidating the crusader presence in the country and managing negotiations with it that ended an agreement with King Louis IX, St. Louis, as his people call him, who was a prisoner in Mansura. 
He agreed to hand over Damietta and release him and those with him among the senior prisoners in exchange for a large ransom of 800,000 dinars, half of which he would pay before his departure and the rest after his arrival in Acre, with a pledge from him not to return to the coasts of the Islamic countries again. Opposition However, the conditions were not conducive for her to continue ruling for a long time, despite her skill and firmness in managing the affairs of the state, bringing her closer to the public, and lavishing money and fiefs on the senior princes. There was strong opposition inside and outside the country, and the Egyptians went out in angry demonstrations denouncing a woman sitting on the throne of the country and the scholars opposed the woman's guardianship and the opposition was led by Esben Abd al-Salam because her sitting on the throne violated the law. At the same time, the Ayyubids revolted in the Levant due to the killing of Tehran Shah and the Mamluk usurpation of the rule, with Shajarat Alder sitting on the throne, and the Abbasid Caliphate in Baghdad refused to approve the Mamluk favor. Her Abdication of the Throne Shajarat Alder in the face of this strong opposition, found no alternative but to abdicate the throne to Princes Aldin Abek Adabek al Asker, who she married, and was called the King al Muiz, and the period she spent on the throne of the country was eighty days. And if Shadrat al Dur had formally waived power and authority, and had retired to her husband's house, then she exercised it with the participation of her husband in the responsibility of governance, so the latter was subject to her control so she forced him to abandon his first wife, the mother of his son Ali, and forbade him to visit her and her son, and reached the extent of her control over the affairs of the sultan that he said the great historian Ibn Tagri Bardi, she was in control of Ibak in all his conditions, and he had no words with her. Faris al-Din Akte was killed. Shadrat al dur helped his al-Din Ibak get rid of Faris al-Din Akte, who caused them many problems in ruling the country, and who was considered one of the fiercest Muslim leaders of his time, and his word had a clear echo in the movements of the soldiers everywhere. Her death. However, Ibak turned against her after he tightened his grip on power in the country, got rid of his rivals at home and his opponents from the Ayyubids abroad, and mastered the management of the country's affairs. He began to take steps to marry the daughter of Badr al-Din Lulu the owner of Mosul. So Shajar Alder got angry for that, and she hastened to plan her plot to get rid of your father, so she sent him to appease him and be kind to him and ask for his forgiveness. Shajar Alder rumored that al Muizli din Allah Ibak had died suddenly at night, but the Mamluks of Ibak did not believe her, so they arrested her and carried her to the woman of his al din Ibak, who ordered her maidservants to kill her after a few days so they beat her with clogs on her head and threw her over the castle wall, and she was not buried until after several days. Thus, her life ended in this way, after she was full of hearing and sight, and contemporary historians of the Mamluk state praised her. Shajar Alder, the Queen of Egypt, was killed in Cairo on May 3, 1257, corresponding to Rabi al al 23, 655 a.h., after her reign lasted 80 days. The biography of Shajar Alder was the subject of a movie that was one of the first cinematic films in Egypt, in which the role of Shajar Alder was played by the actress, Mrs. Asia, and it was shown in many Arab countries in the early 30s of the last century. Shajar Alder in the Egyptian Heritage The tales told people about Shajar Alder. Shajar Alder in the Egyptian heritage is called Shajarat Alder, and it is a character in the biography of Al Zahir Baybars. This popular biography, which was told by storytellers in cafes in Egypt until the beginning of the 20th century, shows how much Egyptians loved Sultan Al Zahir Baybars and Shajar Alder. The biography, which is mostly fiction, says that Fatima Shajar Alder was the daughter of a caliph named Al Muqtadir who was ruling in Baghdad until the Mongols attacked and destroyed his kingdom. And the reason for her name, Shajar Alder, is that her father loved her very much, so he gave her a dress of pearls, Alder. When I went to Egypt, I found that the righteous Ayyub was ruling it, so he married her so that he would remain in power with her. When Baybars arrived in Egypt and entered the castle, she loved him like her son. 
Your Turkmen father in the story appeared as an evil figure from Mosul, who came to Egypt to overthrow Shajar al-Dur and her righteous husband. After al-Sali passed away, she married Ibak. But al-Sali Ayyub came to her in a dream and ordered her to kill him. When she woke up, she brought the sword and killed him. When his son entered the room and found that she had killed him, she got scared and ran, so he ran after her until she fell from the castle and died. Shajar el Dur in Film and Television The 1935 Egyptian film, Shajar el Dur, tells the life story of Shajar el Dur, starring actress Asha Dagger. The Emirati series Shajar al Dur in 1979 about the life story of Shajar al Dur, and the role of Shajar al Dur was played by actress Nadal al Ashkar. The Egyptian film and his Islam in 1962 about the life story of Kutuz, starring Ahmed Mazar, and the role of Shajar al Dur was played by actress Tahia Karioka in the Arabic version, and actress Silvana Pampanini in the Italian version. The Egyptian series Al Fursan in 1994, about the life story of Kutuz, starring Ahmed Abdelaziz, and the role of Shajar el Dur was played by actress Nawal Abul Photo. The Egyptian series At the Gate of Egypt in 2006 about the Tatar invasion of the Islamic world, starring Youssef Shaban and Ragda, and the role of Shajar el Dur, actress Nihal Anbar. The Syrian series Al Zahir Baybars in 2005 about the life story of Al Zahir Baybars, starring and playing the role of Shajar Alder, actor Susan Najmaldin, 